What's so great about reverse harem romances? I don't know, but I'm about to find out in this video. Hi friends, welcome and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, my name is Sigrid and I make videos about books because I love them. Today I'm going to be trying out a new series where I read multiple books from a different genre or trope and then I share my thoughts about them and at the end of the video I will be ranking them from favorite to least favorite. Okay, so in today's video we're going to be trying reverse harem books and I've selected nine books for me to try to read. Um, so without further ado, I'm just going to name the books, read the back, and then we're gonna get started. So if you guys don't know what Reverse Harem is, I believe, from my understanding, which I haven't read much in this genre, so I believe that it is a romance with a woman with multiple love interests. Uh, yeah, and I think it's usually three or more. So let's go over the picks that I have chosen. I tried my best to find things that you wouldn't typically find if you were to look at other reverse harem recommendation videos. So my first pick is Hate by Tate James. So I'm super excited to read this one. This seems like it's going to be hate to love, which is one of my favorite tropes. So excited. Next up, we have Tessa Bailey's newest book, Happenstance. The next pick, I feel like a lot of people don't recommend in reverse harem, um, but I was, I actually read through like all of my romance on my shelf and I picked everything that was like reverse harem related. Okay, The Degradation of Shelby Ann. This is by Emma Cole. The Degradation it, uh, is book one in the Twisted Love series. It's a gothic contemporary reverse harem. Okay, and next up we have a pick that I feel like a lot of people would not have picked for Reverse Harem. I actually was going to use this one as um, one of my Mafia romances, and yes, Mafia romances is coming in the series, but it's a Reverse Harem. I did not know that. So this is book one in the Malice Mafia series by Cora Lee June. I actually got it signed at a Polycon, so really excited about that. I have been waiting so long to read this book, so I'm happy that I'm forcing myself to read it in this series, so cool. The next book is another author that I met at a Polycon, and I was really surprised that she was a black woman, and I was so excited. I was like, oh my gosh, I actually was wearing a Hello Kitty bag. As you can see, my friend just recently gifted me a Hello Kitty doll from my bookshelf. I'm so excited. I love Hello Kitty, and she called me Miss Hello Kitty. I adore her, absolutely love it, and she signed this um, let's see. Yeah, she signed it and she said, Love Fearlessly Sigrid, Phoebe Reed. She also has another book, uh, which is a mafia romance, and that would be in my mafia romance video that I will be making in the future. So, this is Lilac, Reverse Harem, but it's a rock star romance. I'm excited about this book. However, I do have a caveat that I don't tend to like books with a musical background or like rock star stuff. I don't tend to be interested in it. So, I'm nervous, but also I'm willing to give it a chance. So, and I heard really good stuff about this. I've, like, everyone I know who's read it gave it five stars. So, hoping that it's that good that I won't even think about the music. Okay, so next up we have a Catherine Moon book, but it is not the one you think. It is written by Catherine Moon, and this is book one in The Librarian's Coven. So, the other Catherine Moon book is The Lady of Rooksgrave Manor, which is a monster romance, and that is a separate video. I will be trying monster romances as well. Anyways, this is a witch book, which I'm excited. I love witches. Um... Yeah, so it's super short. I'm super excited about it because it does have a magical element in it and I tend to really like uh, books with magical elements. Next up, we have a Raven Kennedy book. This is Signs of Cupidity. This is book one in the Heart Hassle series. I actually also met Raven Kennedy at a Polycon this year and I love her. I went with my fiance and she actually whispered to me that uh, I should try this series and she was like, it's reverse harem. And I was like, Wait, what? Because I did not know what reverse harem meant, but now I'm glad she whispered it. <laughs> but anyways, so this is Signs of Cupidity. Uh, it's a fantasy reverse harem book, so I'm happy that I get a little fantasy in this as well. Okay, so next up we have Dinner Vipers. I'm nervous about this one as well because Gavin from How to Train Your Gavin, he hates this book. Like, he read it and he really hates it. But the only reason why I got it was because I heard that there is a love scene where someone literally gets stabbed during the process. I just want to know how that's written. I want to know how it, how, what happens. Like, I need to know. And I think I, I, yeah. <laughs> In 
sounds really good. I'm, I'm thinking that it just might, it, it sounds good, but I'm thinking maybe it's not written the way that people expected it to. I'm trying to figure out why Gavin didn't like it and I forgot what he said he didn't like about it but I can't wait to read it. A lot of these books are also available on KU so if you have the subscription you should be able to read them for free without having to have the physical copy. There was one more that I have uh, as an ebook so I'm going to look that one up as well. Okay, in the last book that I have, I have the ebook version from KU, and this is Cruel Dark Hearts. It's a dark reverse harem romance, and the reason why I got this is because it, the synopsis and the way that the person was explaining it, it sounded so good that I had to get it. Like, absolutely had to get it. Okay, so I don't know exactly what order I want to read them in, and I feel like it's going to be a big problem because I will second guess myself. So what I'm going to do is I have written the names of all of the books on these little tabs, and I'm going to randomly pick the order that I'm going to read them in. So the first book I'm going to read is... I cannot get my hand in this. Okay, the first book I'm going to read is... Stance by Tessa Bailey. Okay, so Happenstance by Tessa Bailey. Let's go into a quick summary and then I'm going to grab what I need for dinner. All right, so this book follows Elise Brandis. She is a sandwich girl at a newspaper, which means she picks up sandwiches from a deli and takes them to the newspaper office and then she passes them out. That's her job. She wants to be a news reporter, but she doesn't have the credentials to actually be a news reporter. So she's trying to finesse her way into a news reporter job by going undercover at Roosevelt Island to like spy on this like politician person. It's a dangerous job because people who have secrets tend to like those secrets to stay secrets and they'll do what they need to do to keep it that way so it's dangerous roosevelt island is like a place with like snow and i think it's like a ski resort and it's secluded and so she meets the three love interests on something called a tram i do not know what a tram is i'm assuming that it's like a ski lift or i don't know i'm just gonna go with ski lift okay so she gets into a tram these three gentlemen are on there. She's instantly attracted to them and they are instantly attracted to her. So the electricity stops and they're essentially trapped with each other on this tram and they have to use body heat to keep each other warm. Okay, so nothing really pops off then. Like it, it's a close call, but nothing really happens. And Liz, of course, runs away and the guys follow her to her job, which I would be so mad if someone come to my job to like, to claim that they're in love with, like, don't come to my job. These people don't need to know my business. So they come to her job and it's pretty much starts from there. They're essentially like saying, we want to date you all together. Like, we're okay with that. Um, okay, so my thoughts, let's go over the guys, okay? So I thought about this and I have ranked my favorite to least favorite of the men. Favorite of all time is Gabe. Gabe is like a blue collar construction worker. He is someone who has a past that has essentially made him, he has like a little bit of low self-esteem because of things that have happened in the past. And I really do think that this book does a good job of going through the history of the men to show what made them the way that they are. But anyways, so Gabe is a construction worker and he is like adjacent to the politician that Eliz is following. Um, and we know that very early on, but um, he's my favorite. And I will say that Elise, when she meets these guys, she actually does make their lives better. She encourages them to do things and she supports them, especially Gabe. Like I said, he has a past and Eliz like gives him like some type of like supporting words, like towards one of the scenes, which is my favorite scene, because he goes out and he, t he stands up for himself, okay? And then he comes back in and he says, I want some, and I, I can't really say this on YouTube, but I was like, I was like reading and I was like, oh, Gabe, oh my God. That made him my freaking favorite. And number two is Tobias. Tobias, not Elias. Tobias is um, a former adult entertainment star, if you will. Um, and he's pretty much like the, the, the funny guy. Like he always has like a bad joke, like a sexual innuendo. 
and he grew on me. He really does. And I feel like him and Gabe has the best like redeeming arc. I feel like the third guy just really, he just, he's there um, to me. That's why he's number three. But Tobias, he starts off as being like this super cocky guy. And I went in thinking like, there's no way she's going to be attracted to this guy. He's obviously a douchebag. Like, sorry, but no, he, he's not. But like I said, you get into the background of what happened to him and you even get to see him going to his therapy sessions and you learn that putting on a front to like protect his feelings. Like, oh my gosh, Tobias. Okay, and then we got the third guy. So he is described as the guy that he looks like the guy from Bridgerton. He is a rugby coach and he's black. He's the only black character, I think. And he really doesn't have any like describable characteristics other than him being super prim and proper like that's the only thing and that doesn't work for me in a fictional man like i need i need the construct rugged construction guy i need a guy that makes me laugh but i don't want a guy that's like perfect in every way like yeah uh, you know so number three um this book was very well written i think the readability it's super easy to read and i just i really love it of course i can't leave you guys in suspense there is quite a lot of smut scenes i think me going into reverse harem i was a little nervous that it was going to be too many smut scenes because i don't typically like it when it's like that overwhelms the plot i need there to be a plot and if there's not i typically don't enjoy it there is t quite a lot of smut in this book i will be honest and it's <laughs> it's 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 nice it's nice and it's a little bit different. I don't think that I've heard people say that it's it's the same generic stuff because it's it's a little different to me. They did some things that I haven't really read about in my romances that I have read, um, which was really, really interesting. Like, obviously I haven't read Reverse Harem, but I have never read a book where it's like all entrances. If that, if that like I'm trying to talk in code. So if you guys know, you know, but I've never really read a book like that. And it was really interesting to see that played out. Tessa Bailey, I see you girl. So I am going to rate this five stars. I really enjoyed this. I think it was a really fun time. Now I will say this, and I'm gonna give you guys a tip that I don't think a lot of people know. So since this book just recently came out, there is not an audiobook, And I am in a physical reading slump where if I open up a physical book, I immediately want to go to sleep or I lose focus and have to reread the page a million times. Um, but one thing I did discover is that if you have an ebook, even if there's no audiobook, you can have Alexa to read your ebooks. You would just purchase it, um, the ebook from Amazon, and then you would go to your Amazon Alexa app. <laughs> okay. And then you would have her like you would select read read my ebook to me and you would select which one you want to read now it's going to be in her voice so it's not going to be it just it's not going to inflect when it needs to inflect but i mean it's better than nothing i was able to get through i stayed up all night listening to this one the rest the remaining of the book but i did read up until like page 70 i think and then i was like this is this is becoming a, a, a chore because it's like every single night I just don't finish this book and I really need to get this vlog out. So just so you know, even if you don't have an audiobook or even if there's no audiobook, you can listen to your favorite book, just download the ebook and use the Amazon Alexa device to read the books to you. So little trick. Okay, cool beans. Book two will be I wanted to read this one first. Cruel Dark Hearts, the one that I just told you guys about. So. It is time to talk about this book. I have finished it. I actually stayed up all night reading this book. If I would have explained the summary of the book before I actually went and read it, I would have been completely wrong. I was under the impression that the woman was also a serial killer and she ends up meeting other serial killers, which is not true. 
Um, she is just a reporter, which I think is a really good book to follow up happenstance with because she wanted to be a reporter and now we're going into a book where the person is actually a reporter. The main character's name is Stella. She is a reporter and basically part-time reporter but basically all of her articles are about uh serial killers she is pretty much obsessed with them to the point where i don't even think that it's like a curious interest i think that she literally is like in love with serial killers like throughout the book there are bodies found in their town now so there's obviously a serial killer in this town and one of the biggest critique for happenstance by tessa bailey that i just read is that people were saying she's so bland how did she get so many people to fall in love with her this is the book that people should be saying that to because sis has like four guys i kid you not four guys completely ready to do whatever it needs to be done to to win her affection and she literally is wednesday adam this is Wednesday. I don't care. I don't care what anyone says. This is Wednesday Adam fanfic. She is emotionless and she doesn't fear death. I just watched Wednesday on Netflix so maybe like that's the reason why I immediately thought about it but there's literally a scene where someone tries to like you know kill her and she's just like okay I guess it's my time to go. That is something Wednesday Adam would say. Like I just feel like she would say that. So I don't know if Wednesday Adams was like older and into some things this would be her i just really feel like that so i did take some notes from this book um but like i said she's a news reporter and the two guys that she meets are serial killers but i do we don't know going in who the mysterious serial killer is like we don't know and i like reading it it's a super short book by the way you guys reading it i thought i knew who it was gonna be and then they threw in a plot twist at, I kid you not, 98% in the ebook. And I was like, wait, who, who, who's the killer? I, I don't know. I fully enjoyed this book. And what I would say is, I think that I'm going to continue with the series. But I'm going to read the rest of these books first. And then I'm going to go back and read the rest of the series in this book. Because it was, it's not that it was that good. It's just, I need to know what happens. I really need to know that this happened. I feel like this book is a very underrated book. I haven't heard anyone talk about it. I heard like one person recommend this book and I think that is definitely worth the hype. This book is probably the darkest book that I have read this year. I read There Are No Saints which is also a serial killer romance by Sophie Lark and I thought that that was like top tier serial killer romance but no that was child's play okay I was not ready for the level of intensity I was not ready for the new types of smut that comes out in this book I was not ready I know that it was reverse harem but I wasn't ready for all the things that they had in this book so I'm gonna list off like some of the things so you guys know so there's BDSM there's also like I'm picking these things myself based on like what I think I know so I, I don't know if I'm correct but I think that there are dumb sub elements but I feel like it's to the point where it's like degradation is that how you say it degrading because I feel like one of the one of the guys he, the, the stuff that he says to Stella who is the main character I feel like it's a little too to the point where it's not even dumb sub it's it's not that it's kind of just like degrading so I'll just give you an example so <laughs> she goes home with one of the guys right and they they live together and the other guy is in the room with another girl he leaves that girl comes in the room with them and tell her to do something to him and he still has like remnants of that girl on his person so and she does it so I just kind of feel like the stuff that he tells her to do is degrading and then not only that I had a problem with consent when it came to Sophie Lark's book like it was just a, it was it was small looking back at it that book should have been a five star because I think I gave it four stars or three stars because I was like oh I just feel like the consent wasn't there no the consent in this book is probably not there uh there was literally a time where the guy said well if you told me no I would still do it 
That's definitely not consent. And then they try to play it off by saying, oh, I playfully said, no, you, you meant it, sir. So I, I wrote down several times throughout reading this book, I was like, Wednesday Adams, Wednesday Adams. There is mentioning of like her having this eye condition, which isn't related to Wednesday Adams. It's just she has a blue eye and a brown eye. And it is mentioned so many times in this book. I was excited to see the rep for that eye condition because I really haven't seen it mentioned in a lot of books. And so I was excited to see a character with it, but I didn't want it to be the first thing that people mention when she is like mentioned. And it's like, at least I will say this. Yes, it's mentioned a lot, but the thing that I like that they didn't do is like fetishize it where like literally everybody loves her because of that. They did it a little bit, but one of the characters literally hates it. And I'm like, okay, thank God that it's not super fetishized. Um, so I like that. Um, there is a part in this book and I like, I, I feel like every time I read a new book or new trope or new genre or anything, I'm exposed to something and I can tell what I like and what I don't like. Um, and so when it comes to serial killer romances, I have discovered that I tend to like the serial killer elements to be off page. I don't want to see you hurt someone, you know, if it's a woman and it's a man like doing it I don't want to see that like I I really didn't like that element in this book like it is mentioned it is on page you don't get to see a lot because it happened towards the end but like you do get to see them in their serial killerness and I that just it, it made me notice that like I want it to be off screen and then you can just come back and like vaguely talk about it but like just knowing that there are a serial killer like I feel like I like that um I don't like men hitting women like i don't like that at all like if i know it's a romance i know it's dark i know that i'm supposed to like you know be uncomfortable and all of that stuff but i really just do not like when a man would just literally physically hit a woman like i can't i can't do it um so i, I would prefer that type of stuff to be off page so that's why i'm like their serial killerness if it's a man i don't care like i'm sorry but i don't care but if it's if it's if they're going if it's a man going after a woman i just feel like that's unfair and I don't like that so don't do it oh and so like I said um earlier there are four different people in this book that literally is head over heels in love with this woman and she is the most bland person she will tell you herself she is the most bland person there is there's like four different people there's two guys they're friends and then it's her boss and then the serial killer is actually someone who is in love with her. You get the POVs of each of them, um, her boss, this, even the serial killer has a POV. So it gives you a little bit of clues as to like who it could be. But then when I thought that it was that person, I feel like I'm wrong, but I don't know. I, I feel like it's not revealed in, it's not revealed in this book. You have to keep reading to fully understand. And there's like this like t super big twist at the end of this book that I'm just like I'm so confused that I really just want to read book two to fully understand what's happening but okay so like I said in happenstance they did have a conversation about like what type of relationship it was going to be um so in this one I don't think that the men are attracted to each other I think that they just like being team teaming up and that element I don't know why they just like to share that's that's their story however I do feel like they are leaving like some type of opening to where there might be something in the future because the, both men are just like I'm extremely handsome to the point where I can have any girl in this bar help any man so they keep saying any man too so I'm just like they might in the future explore that so I'm not sure but for this book it's it's literally just them and the girl and my last note says that the last two percent of the book changes everything i'm still confused and need to read the next book because i need answers you guys i highly recommend this book i feel like it's it doesn't have as much hype you don't hear about it as much but it's really good but it's really dark so i would say a specific type of person should read this book but if you are squeamish if you're squeamish or if you are a traditionalist and you just can't sus suspend disbelief and all of that stuff like you can't get out of your your you know your box 
I probably wouldn't recommend this book for you. But if you're someone who likes thrillers, true crime, you don't get squeamish when it comes to like violent things or things like that, you might like it because I'm like that and I like it. I really like this book. Um, there were so many scenes. When it comes to the smut, um, I feel like it wasn't a ton, but it was all different. Like every, every episode was so different. Like it's, and it was so new to me because some of these things I am experiencing for the first time uh, in this book and like it, it it was it was it was good I think it was very well put there were some things that kind of made me like squirm a little bit like I'm like oh I don't know how I feel about that so I'm still like qu like questioning how I feel about certain things that happen in this book um but yeah I feel like this one was a way darker than happenstance this one made me think a little bit a little bit more I would say it's way spicier and I should probably start giving these a spicy ratings. So I would say that Happenstance was probably a three. This one's like a four. Yeah, this one's a four. Um, in spiciness, I'm leaving my general rating the same. For this book, I'm going to give it a rating of a 4.5. I was thinking I was going to do five, but then I was like, I don't know how I'm going to rate it if I do this one five. I just feel like... I enjoyed it slightly less than happenstance there were some moments where I just felt a little bit uncomfortable it definitely pushes you there um so I think a good a nice 4.5 all right so book three will be I'm nervous I hope it's not dinner by first I need to read that last oh malice okay oh we're doing all the ones that I'm super excited about okay so that's book three <laughs> Okay, hi guys. I am back and I have finished Malice by Cora, Cora Lee June. Okay, so my thoughts on this. So far, this one is my least favorite. This is a mafia romance. So it follows Juliet. Her best friend's name is Vicky and Vicky is pretty much like a princess to like the mafia. Like she's, her family is like in the mafia. Like they're a big deal. So they started a friendship um, after like meeting in a cemetery, I believe. And they meet like once a week. And the book starts off with v Vicky telling Juliet like, look, something bad is happening. I have to go away for a little while and all of that. But before Vicky can actually leave, she gets stopped by her older brother named Malice. That's what the book is named after. And yeah, she gets sent away pretty much. And so Malice essentially like kidnaps Juliet and forces her to do like something super unspeakable. And after that, I, I don't understand, but like love happens and this is a reverse harem between like brothers so it's malice william and is it anthony malice's name is nicholas and they are the cavelli family i just so first off my my little picky things with this malice is interesting to me i i don't know if i like him or not i it's it's so weird because it's like he is definitely one of those like alpha males and normally like I don't know how I feel about that like you know sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't and there's there's some times where I'm like you know I like him and then there's times where I'm like I really don't like him like you know and I feel like I don't think the consent necessarily was there I just I don't feel it like I I feel like Juliet thinks that she wants to do these things but I don't I don't I don't truly think that she does internally like she's really messed up so Juliet is another uh true crime person she has a podcast and I feel like these books like the order that it's going in it's really interesting and so in this book she has a true crime podcast and she talks about serial killers and the interesting I would say an interesting thing about this book is when like she first meets them she's like giving them all of these like tips from her experience of like researching for her podcast she's like oh well to get rid of a body you'll need this and this and this and they're like that's genius so I did like that part there were some parts that I really liked so going in for like majority of the book, I didn't feel like she was valued like the other girls in the other books that I have been reading. The other girls have been like placed on this high pedestal, like they don't mind sharing yada yada yada. In this book, Ma Malice is the one 
essentially malice she belongs to malice and he allows his brothers to also share her if that makes sense so i feel like she's more of a toy in this book than the other books that i have read so that's why i don't really feel as though i like i like it as much i don't know i just don't feel like the love is there um there's a part in the book where she tells one of the guys that she loves him and i really just did not see how i'm just like when did this happen like nothing in this book warrants love i i don't know i feel like in the other ones they made sense but in this one it doesn't really make sense i am going to give this a 3.5 I feel like I didn't hate it but I also didn't love it I just feel like it's it's right in between but like towards the end I did get some some quotes that I really like I did get some parts that I really like it got more interesting so when I first read it when I first started reading the book I would have ranked the guys from favorite to least favorite as Anthony William and then Malice and then towards the end I was like okay Anthony Malice William and I, I feel like I'm going to stick with that because I don't think that William redeemed himself to me in the ending. Like, I just, he doesn't do anything. So, I don't know. I just, he was the least likable to me. But, oh my gosh, Anthony, he makes the book worthwhile. Like, he would be the one that is telling the jokes and he's funny. But he has, he has such an optimistic outlook on life despite all the things that he's been through and he's been through a lot there are a lot of triggers in this this book some gory scenes this is a mafia um this is a mafia book like they're not going to sugarcoat things there are a lot of graphic details one example is that there is an attempted sexual assault and as revenge the person who did that he literally dies by a curling like a curling iron that you curl your hair with shoved up somewhere that it should not be burnt like it should not be in there and then they described it as oh i smell the burning flesh it it's 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 something so <laughs> that i actually was getting my hair done when i i read that and i was laughing because i was like that is crazy i would have never thought about that like wow malice is really like he does not play so that one that was when the book started to pick up a little bit i will say it was going to get a three star from me until like that part in a beyond i also will say that i think she um juliet takes care of her grandmother and she does come clean at the end about the guys and i feel like it's a completely unrealistic reaction if i were to tell my grandma that i am dating three brothers okay not just three guys that three brothers they would not be okay with it they were they no she would not be okay with that she would call me so many things and i just don't see anyone's grandmother being like yep you should live a little oh also i got my hair done today in case you guys haven't seen i love it i absolutely love it it's just this is everything i wanted this this is what i wanted okay book four is okay <laughs> signs of cupidity i'm excited hey, hi guys i am back to tell you guys my thoughts on signs of cupidity so let me tell you what i am doing right now i am in my snuggie yes because it is cold here and there's like snow well i don't know if there's like snow like i feel like that's drastic but anyways um <laughs> i am chopping chopping up broccoli florets i want to make broccoli soup i haven't told you guys yet but i have made a big change in my diet and my lifestyle i have switched over to a low carb no sugar well low sugar minimum sugar <laughs> lifestyle um and so i'm really trying to eat healthy and my project today i am off work today um, I took a personal day. I just really needed some time to like really unwind and be by myself. Um, so I'm off today and then I'm off all next week. So my project today was to organize my fridge and my freezer and my pantry. And I also wanted to make a broccoli soup. I'm not going to be able to make the broccoli soup because I literally went to Aldi's yesterday with Babe and I said, 
do we have shredded Parmesan cheese? And he's like, yes, we have it at home. We get to home and we don't have it. So now we're gonna have to do it tomorrow. <laughs> so I am uh, cutting up the florets. I'm gonna use my slow cooker, my instant pot. Let me tell you guys my thoughts about signs of cupidity. Cupidity by Raven Kennedy. This is on the very lighter side. And I feel like I should probably start to like tell you guys like on what spectrum of the reverse harem that it is. There is absolutely no smut in here. Like I'm not saying that I'm going into it. It was a very fun read. It was super fun. I actually really enjoyed it. I don't even, I, I don't know what I'm going to rate the book. I really enjoyed it, but like I haven't thought about a rating yet. So let me just tell you guys what it's about. So it follows a woman who is a cupid like that that has been her job for like the past 60 years i think and she's kind of like a spirit she doesn't have a body so she literally kind of just hovel hovers over people and help them fall in love her first assignment was like in the um the human world so that's where she was when we first meet her and then she does something because she gets so upset because uh there were so many guys who were like abusing love and she gets so upset and she does something. I forgot what she does, but she gets called back to the Cupid round and she gets reassigned um, to the Fey world. Um, and so that's actually a promotion than what she is. So she gets assigned there and she is assigned to like the Fey prince, the high prince or whatever. And he is like a huge player, but he's about to get married. And she, she is kind of like one of those girls who is just like, oh, that's so not fair. Like, oh, that's so wrong. Don't do that. Like, that's how she is. And so she's like a spirit, but she's like literally like fussing at him because he's like getting married and the woman he's marrying is so nice. But like, he's like a playboy. Like he's, he has all of these women in his bedroom and she gets really upset to the point to where she just starts shooting him with arrows. And it's so, <laughs> it's so fun. She starts shooting him with arrows and then he gets so mad that he just, like does magic towards like the area that she's in and he makes her visible he gives her a body and so she's everyone can see her now so she has to run for her life and she runs off and ends up on this island with like three guys and they think that she's like some type of demon or some type of spy so they chain her up and then like i throughout the book they start to trust her but i really i really it's so much fun it's so much fun um let me think about a rating um like I said it was such a fun read and I don't I don't think that you have to have smut in a book for it to be good I just I really enjoyed it I had a good time and it's a short read too I will say the ending was so abrupt I was listening to it as I'm like cleaning up the fridge and like it just ended <laughs> it's it, it, she said something and it was like this is signs of community and I'm like wait what, what what's gonna happen so you definitely have to read the rest of the books. I think there's five books in the series. I do think that I will finish reading the series. Like I said, I had a really good time reading this book. Um, so let me think about my rating. I really want to give it, I don't think it was a five star. I feel like that would be a, a, too much. But I think a four, yeah, a four star is really good. I, I would put that there. All right, book five. We're, we're off to a good start. Oops. Okay. I'm gonna put one back. Okay. Book five. Book five is Lilac. Okay. Hi, friends. I finished Lilac and today is the day after Christmas. So if you're watching this, you already know what that means. Barnes & Noble decided to have their 50% off all hard covers sale in store and I'm headed there. But first I want to tell you guys my review about Lilac. I'm already a few minutes late. What, you know. So, uh, Lilac. Um, in my opinion, I don't think I really like the book as much. I feel like I'm going to rate it three stars and that's me being generous because I feel like I was leaning more towards two stars. I was bored the entire book. I don't understand how these guys can go from like being super disrespectful. They don't respect this woman and even after they start dating, like I just, I don't feel it. I don't feel any relationship at all. 
nothing um the only thing that i kind of did like is that there's representation for uh i've already forgotten the name of it but anyways the representation is like when you your senses get mixed up synesthesia that's what it's called her senses get mixed up and she can see music as colors i think but she also can taste emotions and now that's where i draw the line at because i don't think that that's a real thing i think that's made up but i think the other one is real but i'm not sure so um yeah because at first i was so confused because i was like um she was just like oh this this was happening it's like a sex scene and then she's like the taste of cherry is in my mouth and i'm like did she put a cherry in her mouth is she eating cherry colored candy like what why is she tasting cherry you know because that's that's very disturbing to me because i'm just like if i'm all of a sudden just tasting cherry i i need to go to the hospital because i'm just like that might be a sign of some type of like heart attack or something i don't know but um yeah okay so there's a lot of sex scenes but i feel like it's still kind of sort of slow burn because the the smut doesn't pick up until like further into the book you really don't really get that much of the music i feel like you'll see like some performances but it's like three sentences and then they go back on to it there's no plot in the story i feel like everything else that i have read so far for this video had at least a plot there is no plot in this story it is just character driven so this book is about a uh, a band a band with all men it's like three men one of them just died so of course they're looking for someone to replace that person to perform with and in walks braxton uh braxton is a woman and they were expecting i guess because of the name they were expecting a man and so they give her so much crap because they don't want her in the band not because she is a woman not because she's replacing someone that you know was close to them or whatever but it's because they are attracted to her and she's a woman i it's it's completely like this book is so annoying i don't recommend it honestly i'm changing my rating i'm gonna give it a two i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry really did not enjoy this book and but for this video i would have dnf'd it pretty soon on it was so long for no freaking reason i did not like this book and i hated that i waited so long to try it because the expectations that i had it did not live up to it at all i am just so disappointed in this book shame shame um yeah so anyways on good news i'm headed to Barnes and over now i'm so excited okay you guys i'm at a red light i forgot to add two things this is the first of the books that i have read for this video that actually involves sword play which means that the guys are kind of into each other too so what happens what it, you know happens so that happens and then also it was um oh there is a sex scene in the church so i would be cautious if you are a religious person because that was really wasn't triggering for me but it was just kind of like, I could totally see my friend not liking this book because of that scene. All right, bye. Okay, you guys, so there was hardly any traffic on the road and I've just made it to the parking lot and there is hardly any cars here. <laughs> I am back and I am $300 shorter. I went to two Barnes and Noble. I am currently in the one in Virginia and I went to the first one that was close to my house, but they didn't really have a lot of stuff. I spent 200 there 
and then I only spent $88 here, so I did pretty good. Okay, plot twist. Okay, I think that I saw Erin from Booked and Busy in this Barnes and Noble, and I was just staring at her like a fucking creep, and I was like, oh my god, is this Erin? Is this Erin? Like, I don't know, and I couldn't understand, like, what to do. <laughs> I didn't know what to say. I just, I lo I completely lost it and was just staring at her. And I think I made her uncomfortable because I, like she was just like, like looking away and stuff. And I was like, oh my gosh, I really want to like meet her and talk to her and stuff. But I'm like so introverted that I literally forgot how to talk. Like that's how deep it was. So after I went to the counter and I was like, you know what? I am pretty sure it, it was Erin. Let me just go find her. I, I couldn't find her. I don't know where she went. Um. <laughs> But oh my gosh, I almost met Erin. If that's her, I don't know. If she does a Barnes and Noble like book haul or video or whatever, then I know it's her. All right, book six. Oops. Okay, book six is written. Cool. Technically, book six is written. Like you know, it's all of these books are written. <laughs> Oh my gosh, mom joke. Okay, hi everyone. It is the next day and I have finished written. I'm actually on my way back. Okay, I'm actually on my way back to Barnes & Noble today because after looking at my receipt with so much joy, I realized that I was charged full price for a book and I'm gonna show you the book. They charged me full price for this book. Um, this is A Light in the Flame by JLA. This is a pricey book. It is, it originally cost $31.99 and the only thing they took off was my 10% membership discount. So they charged me like 20 something, 27 I think on the receipt. So I need to go back and get that half off. And I was just like, you know what? If I don't go today, which is the last day of the sale, they might not honor it. So I don't wanna take any chances. And then also, I ended up getting this book twice. I already had it on my shelf because I got it from Pango and then I ended up getting it again. Now this is a different cover and it looks really beautiful, but I don't need two copies of this book. I don't even know if I'm gonna like this book. So just a little caveat, if you guys are shopping the sales, be careful and look at your receipt to make sure everything was you know, discounted correctly. Um, I mean, if you see this video, I'm not gonna post it today or anything because I still have several books to read but if you're seeing this in the future and you you know look at your receipt and you see you know that you weren't discounted still try to go back maybe they'll honor it but I don't want to take any chances hey okay, so let's talk about written before I go this was another book that I really did not like I listened to it as you guys know I listened to it on the way to Barnes Noble and as I ran some errands and I you know came back and then I finished it up uh, when I went home I did not like it at all I would say that you know at least the love interest like the female you know protagonist but like it, I just still feel like there wasn't any plot in this and if it was it was something that was so small and minute that I just didn't catch it and I don't know like I just feel like it was so smut heavy there are some more uh some more sword play if you know if you guys are into that this is another book where the men are also into each other um okay so let me tell you what this book is about this book follows a woman who is like uh she's the new librarian at this school for like people with like magic or something you know you don't really get to see that because that sounds really cool but like she is you know just a librarian and then she meets these like professors and they are in a coven the, a coven usually is like four people I guess uh, and they're missing a fourth person it's three of them it's three men and they're just like oh she's perfect uh, and then they send each of the other people to like go and look at her and see See if like you know she's a great thing I feel like in this book the word coven although it does have something to do with magic I feel like it has more to do with like a relationship like it's like oh we want four people in this relationship and this librarian person is perfect for us because they're already like dating each other well I think two of them are like dating each other one of the smut scenes is them like literally you know doing stuff thinking about what they would do to her and I'm just like mm -hmm. 
I don't know. It, it was a good scene. It was a nice scene. I realize, and I'm not ashamed to admit it, that I don't mind the sword play. I don't mind it. I don't. Um, but this book was still boring to me, and I feel like I might have overspoke with Lilac because at least at certain parts, I was interested in Lilac. You know, it wasn't to the point where I was just like, oh, this is so boring. I am, I think I'm going to give this a two star as well. I just feel like I wasn't really interested in it. It was extremely boring to me. I don't feel like I will continue on with the series. Um, yeah, this is definitely a not a lot of plot definitely a lot of smut um kind of situation Book seven would be hate okay hi guys so i am back i'm actually uh dropping some books off at the post office and i thought that i would check in with you guys and let you guys know how i felt about hate i finished it earlier this morning i love this book i think it was the one that i enjoyed the most because it had a lot of angst in it i feel it does it did have one or two smut scenes and that it really wasn't focused too much on there there was a plot i think that this was my favorite so far so far so this book follows madison kate she is kind of like a rich girl um her dad is her dad, she's like a rich girl who dad doesn't really care about her. And so she sneaks out to go to this MMA fight with her best friend. And pretty much like something pops off, like something happens. I think it's like gang territory and someone gets shot at the MMA fight. And so they all have to run for their lives. And her father is not a likable dude with the, the people in the gang territory. So when she's discovered, they want to take her and, you know, what do whatever i don't know so she's running for her life and she ends up running into like this guy who like while she's hiding and uh i think his name is cody kodiak kodiak jones i think it's so cool how she say like she'll say his entire name she'll be like what do you want kodiak james and i'm like that's a funny it's, it's a funny name you have to admit so um so pretty much someone stole her id and they died there like the person who died had her id on them so everybody thought that it was her who died so um after everything like happens and she's just like i didn't die i'm literally right here i you know just lost my phone and stuff um so her father in order to like make a lesson out of her he sends her away she is pretty much framed for like breaking an earring and a bunch of other crimes she is someone who has her entire career thought out you know like she knows what colleges she wants to go to she was accepted to some of them and as soon as she was arrested like all of the colleges kind of just denied her so her life is pretty much over so she gets sent away to I think her aunt and when she comes back she is just filled with hate because she was framed and she knows who did it and it turns out the person who framed her is living under her roof because their mom is dating her dad. So it's like the th uh, three guys. So obviously they're hot. So she, she hates them, but also like she's attracted to them as well. So it kind of goes back and forth. And there's like this like prank pranking that they do. Like they're trying to up one each other, but they're also trying to protect Madison Kate because someone is after her it's just it's filled with so much stuff and it's really fun like it really it's really fun and they're going to um they're going to college so like when she comes back she's going to a college there and she's going there with them and they're like super protective but they're also kind of like overprotective of her like like she can't date anyone and they're just like over my dead body kind of thing so I just, I really, really love this book. It's really, really good. I am going to give it five freaking stars. I will be considering, I will be continuing the series. I just think that is so great. Okay. Uh, book eight will be, <laughs> I still hope it's not Den of Vipers, but it might be. Ah, it is Den of Vipers. Oh my gosh. I'm not ready for this book. <laughs> Hey, hi friends so i am back and i have finished reading den of vipers by ka knight and i have a lot of thoughts uh this is a 600 plus page book and i honestly feel like this book is just way too long it it's it's too it's too long to the point where it's like it went from a five star read if it would have stopped at a reasonable point it would have been five stars i enjoyed the main characters like personality i really liked her 
but I also like just enjoyed the plot the overall plot of like everything that was happening I was enjoying it but it just got so tiring and at, at some point this is kind of boring because it's just so long that I just wanted to give up honestly I wanted to DNF this book so many times but I stuck it out and I finished it it is a tomb of a book like wow yeah okay so my thoughts let me just summarize what this book is about I truly think that this is a beauty in the beast retelling because um uh okay so the main character Victoria her father is like someone she doesn't really speak to she's estranged like they don't talk he was abusive when she was a child and so she doesn't really have a lot of fun memories as you know as a adult and so she doesn't talk to him they're estranged like whatever so he's pretty much a bad dad like I did I mention that so he owes money to the mafia I believe for gambling or something like that and they come to collect the debt, the Vipers, you know, that's what the book is named after. They come to collect the debt and instead of like owning up and taking responsibility for his debt, he offers his daughter Victoria, who he's like hasn't spoken to in years, as like a prize, like take her instead. And they, they, they accept, you know, so they send some people to the bar. Um, Victoria owns a bar, by the way. So they send some people to her bar to, uh, to pick her up, you know, to take her like she's going to be a prisoner. Uh, and my favorite scene is that like she literally gets a bat and she just beats them all up and it's like four or five guys and <laughs> that was my favorite part of the book it's really good I do like her personality still to this day like I feel like she was a really really good character like probably one of my favorites in this video period but it, it was just too long so anyways so this book is essentially just her being kidnapped taken to like this mansion and being forced to stay with the vipers of course like she's going to fall for them because it's a captive captor romance um i will say based on the summary where she's like i will never give them my heart i'm gonna play hard to get like you know i'm gonna not gonna go down without a fight i believe it like i i i think she did she really did fight until the very end and then all of a sudden she was just like you know what I'm not getting out of here alive. I might as well make the most of this. And it's not that bad of a place. Like I don't really want for anything. The only thing I'm missing is my bar. Like, you know, I've never, you know, been in a place like this. So honestly, knowing what I know, reading the entire book, she was never going to be let go. Like they were never going to let her go. I think she did the right thing. Um, so trigger warnings for like, <laughs> trigger warning for this book. Um, the, the characters are really into pain as like pleasure which I think is my first time reading a book like that but like a lot of crazy things happen there's blood play there's knife play um the female character does have like some objects inserted into her such as a gun a knife I think a bottle I, I don't know but like just letting you know it really does take it there it's a really really dark romance book um so <laughs> my my thoughts in my ratings for this like i said i would have rated it five stars if it ended at a decent point in my opinion i think that there were three separate points of where this book could have ended uh the first point is there was a time where victoria could have got away like and i feel like she was given a choice I'm not going to say, I'm trying to speak vaguely just in case you guys do want to finish, like, read this book. But she was given a choice and she could have walked away. And then uh, it does end in a very emotional, you know, ending. And it everything is just tied up. It could have ended there. But no, it does not. That's like one third of the book. So the second time where it could have ended is like one of the, the Vipers, one of the men gets kidnapped and they all have to go and save him. They do that, including Victoria and you know it's a very emotional ending which could have ended there or it could have been book two in the series i think that this book could have been spread it out into more of a series and it would have been more enjoyable um but this 600 page book like no it, it it's no 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 so uh yeah so that was the second ending and then the third ending like I said earlier, her father is a bad guy. Like he's just really cost her a lot of hardships in her life. And so revenge is necessary. So that's, you know, the ending three. That could have been book three, in my opinion. I will say this, 
if they were to make this into a movie, I would I would so watch it. I, I would watch it. Honestly, it should be a series. And like, like I said, separate them based on those things. You can flush it out. But like, yeah, I think you can definitely make this into a season. But um, I would say if you were to film it, I think that I would like to see Victoria like towards the end where she's like one of the vipers like she's accepted it she's one of them she loves them they love her all of that I want to see that first and then I want to do a flashback of her like uh one year ago like her working in the bar before she was kidnapped all of that stuff and then like show the kidnapping scene and work your way up to it that would be great that would be a good progression of it I would totally love to see that however so for my rating for this book I'm going to give it a three star uh, like I said, like it, it, it really is just too long. I just, yeah. Okay. And so that makes the final book. I don't know what's missing. The final book is, oh, the degradation of Shelby Ann. Oh. Guys, I am back to tell you guys my thoughts on the final book, the degradation of Shelby Ann. Um, I do not like this book and I can't think of anyone that I would recommend this book to like I can't think of anyone that I could say well if you like this that you would like this book except for people who have like a rape fantasy or someone who enjoys seeing the torture of others those are the only people that I feel would read this book and actually enjoy it this book is really intense it I feel like I don't know why this is written. I feel like, you know how some people were saying a little life is just trauma porn and it's just every single thing, it just written just to get an emotional thing out of it. That's a literary novel. I understand that they did that, but this is like a romance novel and it's supposed to be like kinky and it's supposed to like intrigue you in some way. But this was just really, really uncomfortable material to read. So this book starts off with a group sex scene and it's obviously clear from the beginning that Shelby Ann is not someone who wants to partake in these activities. She's saying this is my first time doing these things but I'm being forced to. I've been with one guy intimately and um, her mom is super strict. She ends up meeting this guy who is much older than her. So she starts dating this much older guy against her mother's wishes. Her mother, mother knows best, okay? She might be mean or whatever, but she knows best. So she's dating this much older guy and she, she goes on this date. She gets kicked out of the house on like this particular date. She's there, she gets proposed to by this guy. And it seems really nice. He, he starts off, he starts off really nice and you know, with her. Um, but there are a few red flags, which immediately made me like kind of like cautionary. So the first one is like while she's on this date, she goes to the bathroom, right? Before the engagement. And someone is just like, I can't believe that he took this girl's ring back and he has it. He gave it to this girl. So she's like what me like are they talking about me and yes they were and so she pretty much like told those girls off like she she's a little mousy but she does stand up for herself and then she goes back and she gets proposed to and she accepts of course um so then she has a talk to talking to him and he was like I don't know what they're talking about yada 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 a lie uh the second red flag is they're engaged and they're talking about prenups the the print prenuptial agreement is very iron, ironclad which honestly it should be like it needs to be ironclad to protect both of you but they didn't want her to have her own lawyers which is a big no-no um she didn't really get a, a long time to like look over it and the prenup is like pretty much talking about like she can't make basic choices for her own body she can't choose her birth control she can't choose her doctors like it's serious like she is basically a slave so she does end up saying yes, only because like she has nowhere else to go. Like, like I said, her mom has put her out and told her she cannot come home. So she is stuck with this man. Um, so she does eventually end up accepting and everything is okay until she discovers that he is having an affair. Like she gets a red flag kind of feeling with like one of the helpers, the person that's like, 
planning out her wedding and all the details is kind of like she's getting really snappy with her and she's like of course like they're not they can't be a thing because she's significantly older than him and then she's just like wait he's older than me and he doesn't care about that age gap so she does end up walking in on them like doing the do and when i say doing the do i mean this man has a weird fetishization with you know so it's not like regular degler it's that and it's going to be that for the rest of the book so um so she walks in on that and i like green i'm gonna do green today she walks in on them doing that and she gets so upset that she basically just starts to like pack her bags and leave um but he stops her and he's just like well i have a very carnal needs and i was trying to save you because you are my wife and i don't want you to have to satisfied those carnal needs but since you want to be offended by it i'm gonna make sure that you handle those needs so that is the first time she is assaulted um and anally raped by him but it is like not the last at all the assault that she the assault that shelby ann's like has in this book is just so horrible like i wanted to cry like it's it's super it's so it's it's not only just really bad but it's super descriptive it's really on page and not only does he do this but he passes her off to one of the guards as well and i don't like that so another red flag i forgot to say is that his dad was super disrespectful to her when he was like telling him about the engagement he was just like oh she's a gold digger it's it, it was kind of like he was referring to her as like someone who wasn't even human so all of that was red flags but like i said she had nowhere to go so she really didn't have that much of a choice it's such a weird book and i just i would not recommend it to someone it reminds me of there's this true crime movie i think it's called the girl next door don't watch it because i couldn't finish it so i did hear about the true crime story like i'm a huge true crime person i love to watch people tell true crime and put their makeup on um but uh i i've heard the story before but i don't think they went into such details and there's a difference between saying the stuff and not going into that much details versus seeing it on tv or going into super descriptive to the point where you can literally see it in your head like i one thing i can't i cannot take away from is that this is an amazing writer she is a good writer it's, it's the topic that i'm saying is super bad because I pictured everything that was happening. It made me unsettled. I am not okay. I I don't think I'm going to be okay after reading this book for a really long time. So that's that's pretty much what happens. I think one of the it, it's just throughout the entire book, it's it's just her being abused. He's slapping her around. He's doing pretty much. There's so much stuff. Like it's so bad. It's so graphic. It's so many details that I I just weren't. I warn you guys please do not read this book if you if you can't take it i don't think if i knew what this book was about it's not a reverse ham it is not there's there's no there is a, like another person that she dated like i said she's only had one like intimate partner before and he is there i think he's like the brother or something which further pisses off the husband because he's just like oh i know it's one guy but like i didn't know it was him he always takes what's mine so like I'm just letting you guys know that like this book is one of those things where you really have to warn people please don't read this like this is going to mess up your entire life it's that serious it is that graphic so um yeah it's it's really intense so um yeah and I don't I don't even think the ending to me I don't think that it made up for I don't think the ending made up for us having to sit through that story at all there was even there was even a part where um even the group scene that um the book starts off with you he basically degrades her by saying like you know what entrance he is like looking at so he's basically saying i like my girls clean this is not clean you need to go and clean this up next time be clean or something like that like it was just really embarrassing and she even said that she was embarrassed because it was multiple people there so she was just like oh my gosh like i'm so embarrassed but like yeah so later on in the book he tells one of the like helpers there to like go and get her cleaned 
So literally we got a like a page of like uh, her getting an enema, which is crazy. So um, that was like interesting to see. Never would I thought that there would be a romance novel where the person is getting an enema, but yeah, crazy, super crazy. Um, yeah, so overall, let me just give my rating for this book and then I'm going to finish getting dressed and then I'll come back to talk about the rankings. Um, but I rated this book 1.5 stars and I, I did look at the other ratings. There were several people who rated it one star for the same reason as me. I don't know why this book is written. This is just, it's sick. It's really, really sick. And it's not a love story at all. Like there's nothing about love in this book. It's just really like traumatic. This could have been a literary fiction novel, but dark romance, it is not. Reverse harem, it is not. Like don't read this book. I'm sorry, but I, I really hardly ever tell you guys not to read a book, but don't read this book. It's too much. It's not worth it. No. There is a second book coming out in this month, I think. I don't know if I'm going to pick it up because I am immediately like getting rid of that first one. But apparently the second book is supposed to be the reverse harem part. I don't even know if I care because I'm feeling like after all that you've been through, sis, like she had to have gotten assaulted at least like 50 times reading the book. And you saw all of them. It's not like it was just like, oh, he took her into the room and then it flashes the guard. No, you're in the room with them. You're seeing exactly what he is doing to her. You're feeling it because she's describing how it is feeling yeah, I don't think that I would want a reverse harem story about her because I'm just like, you need to heal. Like, you've been through hell on earth and love and or sex is not something that would be on my mind after that traumatic stuff. Yeah, this is definitely not a series that I think I'm going to continue on with. So I'm going to, yeah, rate it 1.5 stars. I felt bad giving it one star. So I'm going to give it 1.5, but on Goodreads, it's going to be one star because you can't do half points there. But for this video's sake, I'll do 1.5 only because I, I know I'm giving it, I'm giving the one, I'm giving the 0.5 because I feel like the author is a good writer. And I feel like if you're able to tell a story to the point where I feel nauseous, I feel so uncomfortable. I am constantly thinking about the story, even though I don't like it. You're a good writer. It's the content that you're writing is just so intense and just not okay that I just, yeah, I, I can't give that higher, but I will give you 0.5 for being a good writer. Um, all right, so we're gonna head off to the rankings and I'll let you guys know what I think about all of the books that I have read so far. Okay, hi guys. So I am finally back. I have my face put on and I want to talk about the final rankings for my reverse harem video. So in the number one spot, actually let's go from bottom up to the top. Okay, so least favorite to favorite. Obviously my least favorite is the book that I just mentioned, The Degradation of Shelby Ann. I did not like this book. I just was so uncomfortable with it. I have to put it in spot number nine as the very least favorite. And then we have spot number eight. We have another book that I really wasn't enjoying, but it was still better than the degradation book. So this is written by Catherine Moon. Um, yeah, nothing else to say about this one. I just didn't like it and I was bored. Number seven, we have Lilac. I liked it a little bit more than written, but less than everything else. Um, <laughs> so yeah, Rockstar Romance. I, I just feel a little disappointed with this one. I just wasn't feeling it as much. Number six, we have Den of Vipers. I feel like this probably should have gotten a higher ranking, but everything else I just like better. So I don't know, but um, yeah, this is this is an awkward situation, but I feel like, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna leave it at six. Number five is Malice. Um, I feel like this is a good halfway start. It was a 3.5, I believe. Um, yeah, I don't, after further deliberations with myself, I don't think that I'm going to be finishing up with a series here. I don't think I liked it enough to actually care about what happens next. And I feel like it's not my type of romance that I enjoy. I feel like I could still like Reverse Harem and still know that there's certain writers and, and different types of Reverse Harem that I'm just not going to be into. And this is definitely one of them. Um, 
For spot number four, we have Signs of Cupidity. This is a completely different story. This is a book that I am definitely going to be continuing continuing on with the series. Really, really enjoyed this. I can't wait to meet Raven Kennedy at Book Bonanza and tell her how much I enjoyed this book. In spot number three, we have Cruel Dark Hearts. And I knew that my Cruel Dark Heart was going to enjoy this book as much as I did. I just knew it as soon as I saw the cover, as soon as I knew it was a uh, serial killer romance, I was just like, I'm gonna love this book. And I did, I really did enjoy it. I do plan on finishing the series. Like I said, it ends with a cliffhanger and it's so confusing that I just, I really probably need to read that today. And by happenstance, number two is Happenstance by Tessa Bailey. I, I feel like I really enjoyed this. It was really fun. And I don't know why there are so many haters of Tessa Bailey. I feel like her books are really enjoyable. They might not have a lot of substance, but I just feel like I really did have a good time reading this book. So I'm putting it in spot number two. And finally, we have spot number one, my overall favorite in this reverse harem vlog completely. And I definitely will be finishing up the series. This is Hate by Tate James, the Madison Kate series. I am coming for you. Um, I will be also meeting Tate James at Book Bonanza as well, and I actually have pre-ordered quite a lot of her books, so I think I, I I definitely will be keeping those because I spent quite a lot of those pre-orders. So I can't wait to meet her and pick up my <laughs> signed editions of all of these books. I might just wait until I have those copies to read it, but a lot of these are on KU, so if you're interested in checking out these books, they're pretty much on KU. Okay, so it's time for Jerry's final thoughts. Um, yeah, so I do not recommend reading nine super dark reverse harems back to back. This is torture for your brain. You need something else in between. It's just not normal, especially if you're someone who doesn't often read those books. You know, I felt like I, I was okay until book number nine. <laughs> uh, the decoration really did, like, I, I'm not okay, okay? Please check on me. Um... But yeah, overall, I really did enjoy diving into a new genre that I don't necessarily partake in. And I look forward to doing this again. So if there is a specific trope or genre that you guys would like me to check out for this series, please let me know by leaving a comment and I will get started for that. So coming up, I have monster romance, I have mafia romance, I have... Okay, I don't remember the other ones, but I have a lot in store for 2023. So uh, if I haven't told you guys already, Happy New Year, and I'm super excited um, for what I have coming for you guys. So please stay tuned. And if you're not subscribed, you're gonna wanna be subscribed for what I have planned for this year. So if you like this video, please click the like button. But until next time, I will see you guys later in a future video. Bye.